Okay, so in this video, <laughs> we're going to be continuing our uh, setup of the uh, Cisco Call Manager Express. And we are using this um, configuration example from Cisco. You can see it right here. It's uh, And we're not going to be doing the Unity portion of it. Here's the, <laughs> the steps. Uh, we've already updated our network diagram. Almost. We haven't quite figured it, finished with it yet. And the next on the list was to define our DHCP server. Uh, so there we go. So here's the uh, going, I'm going down there document here. And the last video, we kind of went through this already. So here's our network diagram. Check. We've got our network diagram. And the next on the list was this uh, defining a local DHCP server. I'm not going to read this whole thing to you, but I did want to point out a, a couple things right here. It says uh, for this configuration, we're going to create uh, two local DHCP servers, one for voice and one for data. And it says when you create two, two DHCP uh, servers, they're for two different networks, which makes sense, right? And the other one is, uh, this is a little bit confusing to me. I didn't quite understand what they're, where they're going with this, but it says, uh, this procedure creates a shared pool of IP addresses in which all DHCP clients receive the same information that include option 150 for TFTP server IP address. And the benefit of the, of the selection of this method to set up DHCP servers is that you set up only one DHCP pool. And uh, yeah, that got me scratching my head. I'm not really sure why they said that. Uh, we will be setting up option uh, 150 and we will be using two different pools. Uh, this, this right here, telling the phones uh, where to download their firmware from. And the grand streams, we're not going to use that uh, right now. We might later, but we're going to go ahead and provision it anyway, uh, just to have it kind of like a bookmark. And this doesn't have to be the router, by the way. It's, it can be the um, you know Linux box, right, on your network. So anyway, that's that's kind of what that is, and and I'm not sure why it says there's only going to be one pool. So um, uh, moving on. So in the last uh, video, we uh, provisioned our Los Angeles uh, router, and we're using my laptop uh, connected to port seven right here uh, to configure the uh, Ethernet switch, and all that's fine and dandy for uh, <laughs> configuring Ethernet switch and. And, and changing the phones and that sort of thing. You'll see in the previous video. Yeah, we don't want to continue doing that, so we want to disconnect uh, this guy. And I think what I'm going to do, if you're watching my older videos, we're going to move our uplink to port 7, and I'm going to make this port right here. This will be our monitoring port. Let's see, do I have a picture of that now? It'll be for monitoring. So I'm just going to put... Uh, maybe I should put mirroring. Okay. I think most people understand that. All right. And this guy is going to go. He's going to be hanging off the ether somewhere over here. Oh, sorry. Probably be over here, right? And he'll be hanging off this guy. We'll just leave him right there for now. So, all right. And uh, I've already physically moved this cable. I did this before the video. I didn't want to bore everyone with that. And yes, I can still um, SSH to this guy. So I went ahead and <laughs> after I looked at this for a second, I was like, yeah, you know, I should probably throw the management network in there. And I just added this little cloud right here and showed my laptop hanging off of it. And and how it's connecting to the Los Angeles and this, this, switch, this switch down here. As you notice, I, I don't have a connection going to uh, this e-switch, this, I'm uh, sorry, this SMC ethernet switch. Okay. So that means we're going to have to set up some routing from my laptop. Okay. So let's get to the, uh, the nuts and bolts of this step, shall we? Let's see. First we need to, uh, I've already SSH'd into the, <laughs> into the router. I'm trying to figure out where to put this. Okay, so we're going to go into the router, config T, and uh, we're going to create, enter the command IP DHCP pool name. 
So, uh, okay, config T. And I'll just copy and paste this. Copy, paste. All right. So we're going to have a DHCP pool with a name of voice. Okay, so I'll enter the command. Oh, in order to specify the IP address of the DHCP address pool and options mask. Okay, so this is going to be the pool of IP addresses you want the uh, router, the 3845, to divvy out to the uh, to the clients, right? So which would be the phones and and other devices down here, right? Well, it'll be the phones. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Let's not confuse it. Okay, so we're not going to use their um, <laughs> their network. We have our own, so it's a network. Um, 192.168.13.0 to uh, 255.255.255.0. Okay, so it's basically, it's going to DHCP everything <laughs> on that network. You, you kind of following what I'm saying? So, so everything from this port down is going to have this DHCP pool called voice for all the phones, okay? And we're going to divvy out these uh, these 13.0 IP addresses, all right? That's all we're telling it. Now it's going to say, we says option 150 IP address in order to specify the TFTP server IP address from which the Cisco Unified IP phones will... And, and this is basically saying... Uh, 150 as an option in DHCP, and you can Google the um, the spec if you want more information on it. There's a, there's a bunch of other there's a bunch of options, and we're gonna probably add some later. Uh, but anyway, 150 is telling it where the uh, where the phones can go get its software load. So I'm gonna say option 150, and uh, its IP is going to be 192.168. 13.1. Basically, it's the 30 or 3845, right? And, uh, and I think it might default to that, but we're just going to follow along with <laughs> with this um, example with this document, right? I, I don't want to veer too far off it. So, and then the the default router, and this this might sound weird. This is kind of like another option. This is basically telling the phones. What its default router is. It's, it's so we're not telling the the router what it's. We're telling the phones what their default router is, and uh, you would think it would be obvious, <laughs> and, and it might be. They might automatically default to it. We're gonna make sure they know what it is, right? So, oops, the default router is uh, 192.168.13.1, right? And um, and they have say they say put end in there. I just do control C and then write. Okay. Oh, I forgot to do the term mon on it. Term mon. That's for monitoring the console messages. Okay, so now that we've got that done, I, I looked over there and noticed <laughs> that the that the phones already had IP addresses. So we can do a uh, show IP DHCP a binding. And you can see that all three of our phones have got IP addresses. And uh, so that's good, right? Uh, but if you notice, yeah, so we're using 13.41. It knew better than to use 13.1. So, um, and, and this guy right here, the 3845 might not, he might not try to use 3041. But but just in case we are going to uh, add another DHCP command, that's not in this document right here. Okay, and and that's to uh, that's the command to exclude. So we're going to do a config t, and we're going to say ip dhc oops cp, and then uh, question mark, and we want to exclude some addresses. All right, let's see. Uh, and you can do a question mark again if you want to look at the format. But what it is, um, is you give it the 
uh, okay, I want to exclude from here to here. So you give it a range, basically. So we're going to say I want to exclude uh, 192.168.13.1 through 192.168.13.100. So the first 100 IP addresses, we, don't, we, we want to leave those so DHCP doesn't serve those out. Okay, and I'll uh, hit enter, Control C, and write that. I'm going to go look at our config here real quick. Uh, show config. And uh, so there we go. Network option. Oh, here they are. Here's our excluded IP addresses. So, so our voice, uh, I guess all the pools for that matter, if we create another pool in, in the same range, which we will are going to do here in a little bit. It knows not to use these first hundred IP addresses, which is good because now we know that it won't try to stump on this IP address or anything else that we decide to provision that is under uh, IP address 100 and below. Okay, so um, so yeah, this is looking this is looking pretty good, right? It, if you want to see what's going on with the server, other than that other command, you can do a uh, make sure to do a term on, and then just do a debug. Make sure you put IP because there is a debug D DHCP, but that is different than the debug IP DHCP. And then you hit a question mark and you say server, and then uh, events. Okay. And this, and uh, hold on, I'll go reboot one of the phones. And you can see what your uh, DHCP server is doing. Okay, see it saw the phone and it gave it an IP address. Okay, and there's more debug messages. We might get to it here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this debug off. So no debug all. Oops. And, um, and look at the next step. So it says, the very last thing on here, it says, repeat the same procedure in order to create the local DHCP servers for the data addresses, right? For the range of the data addresses. And you probably know what's going to happen next. If we tried, uh, let's do a show config. So if we, uh, if we do a config T, and then uh, IP DHCP pool uh, data. Okay, this will be for our computers and that sort of thing. And then we try giving it the exact same network. I think you know what's going to happen. <laughs> That's not going to work. And it makes sense, right? So you don't want to have competing uh, DHCP servers running. And if you look the way look at the way our drawing is, you can see so we've got the SMC switch is is handling all the phones, and then our 3750 uh, Cisco 3750 is going to be handling all our data, right? And uh, the stuff that's grayed out hasn't been provisioned yet, so you just ignore whatever's grayed out. Uh, this, this switch and this Xena Compact do actually exist, uh, but they're not doing anything, obviously. There's no wires connecting. <laughs> yeah, so now we have to uh, split up our IP addresses. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I've got VLAN 1 with a default IP address of 13.1. So on this guy right here, he's on VLAN 1. Okay, so... <laughs> I, I was sitting there and uh, I kind of stopped the video for a second because I was, uh, I'm trying to think on, I, I don't want to make this DHCP video uh, how to subnet your network um, video because that can get quite complicated. I was just about to pull out my, uh, my little cheat sheet here. This is a little Excel spreadsheet I made <laughs> probably back in video one um, or two or something like that where I, I was showing how to subnet or make um, subnets out of a class D subnet. <laughs> so sub subnets, if you will. They've got a name, it's escaped me right off the top of my head. But anyway, um, I wanna keep this video simple and, and that would not be simple. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just 
so one through 128 is going to live on this guy right here. And then on the data, uh, we'll do 129 through 256. I believe that's right. Maybe it's, oh, sorry. It's uh, zero or one through 127 and then 128 through 255. I think that's how it works. So yeah, I'm even going to need my calculator for that. Yeah, so we want 128. So it's okay. Yeah, so it's 128 through 255. All right. And then 0 to 127. And hopefully I don't lose everyone right now. <laughs> right now. So okay, back to our router. I'm going to I'm going to control C out of this guy. Oops. Control C. First, let's go configure this guy. <laughs> So, okay, so config T. And we want to do the voice DCP server. And we're going to change his, his network from network from, oh, so from 13.0, that's, that's right. Oh, yeah, actually, that's uh, 192.168.13.0. But we're going to change his subnet mask to 255. Since we're starting at zero and we're going to two, I'm sorry, to 128. Uh, where is it? Right, right here. Well, we're going to 127, but the subnet mask will be 128. I'll just show you. That might make more sense in my confusing Excel spreadsheet. So it's uh, 255.255.255.128. I guess we got to delete it. I don't know. I might have to delete the whole thing out. I, let's see. Maybe if I can just do a no. Oh, there we go. Ah, much better. Okay, we'll do a control C and a right. Okay. And we'll do a show config. All right, excellent. So we just changed our uh, our pool of IP addresses. Okay, so let's go back and configure this guy. Config T, copy and paste. We're going to the data. So now what we want to do is we want to do network one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot thirteen dot one 28 with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.128. I do believe that's right. This is why I keep my little... I made this from scratch. Well, if you go watch the video, you'll know, but this is... It's very helpful so you don't make any mistakes or you're trying to provision stuff. Yeah, so it's 128, so that's going to be our wire address with a subnet mask of 128. And uh, so that should work. Yes, it does. And the Cisco is good. It will, um, it will, uh, it'll fuss at you if you try doing something wrong, usually. Uh, we don't need the option 150 for our computer network, so we're going to uh, eliminate that. But we are going to set the default router. And the default router is going to be 192.168.1.129. Right? And if we look at our Excel spreadsheet, that's the first one after the wire address, which is, you can make it any of them, but it's very common to use the, the first one after the wire address. All right. We're going to do a control C and a right. And show config. And there you have it. So now we have both our IP DHCP pool for our voice and our data. And they're on and they're going to be serving two different networks, which in the next video, we will, uh, I might go ahead and we'll do a, a 1Q trunking on this, dot 1Q trunking, but I don't know, I'll think about it. In the, in the real life, we're going to hook this up, but just to do dot 1Q trunking example, which is, I think, which is in the, what they talk about here, uh, we'll do that, but it will be the next video. And one last thing. I should point out is we need to uh, 
to fix our excluded addresses. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do a config T and we're going to say no to this guy right here. All right. And now we're going to add, we're going to say IP DHCP exclude, oops, exclude. And we're going to make two of them this time. So the first one is going to be 192.168.13.1. Through 192.168.13. Let's see. Um, let's keep it simple. We'll say, um, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, it's, a, it's 128 size, maybe 16 for network equipment. That should be big enough. So, one through 16. One's not being included, so it'd be two through 16, basically. Oh, actually, that's not going to cover our <laughs> that's not going to cover our Ethernet switch, is it? So, so how about we make it through? We'll say forty-five. That's a non. I, I don't normally do that, even though one hundred was kind of bizarre, but it at least cover this dot forty-one right here. That's leaving a lot of static IP addresses in our pool. But that's okay. And uh, let's do the next one: IP DHCP exclude. Whoops exclude um, 192.168.13.129 oh, through um, I don't know what's what's 16 on that oh we'll just pull up my little <laughs> handy day this little spreadsheet does come in handy so 16 IP addresses is to and like I said they don't have to be exact network addresses. I just do this just to make it nice and neat. I should have probably done that on the other side as well. Uh, but, okay, so we're just going to go to 143. So 192.168.13.143. Alright. And right. And now we're going to do a show config. Okay, so now we have our excluded IP addresses for the two different pools. Um, this one's doing a whole bunch of them, and this one's only doing 16 of them. Okay, so it's the first 16 in, in the data pool, and it's the first, <laughs> whatever, 40-something in the voice pool. Okay, and last but not least, I wanted to show a couple other uh, commands that you might use. Uh, one is... Um, you can tell the equipment that's um, that's being served by the DHCP server uh, what its domain name is, and um, you can also tell it the, which DNS server to use. In this case, we're just pointing it straight at the uh, 3845, our Los Angeles router. We'll set that uh, that DNS server up later. I'm I'm sure I haven't read through this whole document, but I'm guessing they might. Maybe not. Uh, if not, I've, I've made a video on how to do this. And uh, yeah, you can just set, them, set it up in both, both pools if you want. And if you do a question mark, you can probably find all kinds of stuff that you'll find interesting. But uh, like I said, I don't want to veer too far from our document. Uh, these, these, these are very common. So uh, I thought I would uh, share them with you if you want to add them to your config. And... Uh, and that's it. We're done. I'll, I'll update the uh, drawing and and I'll see you for the next one. Um, configuring the interfaces. We're, looks like we're going to do some .1Q trunking.